Last week, I told you why your wristwatch couldn't actually measure your recovery. Today, I'll be explaining why you can't really make any meaningful changes in the short term to your recovery. Now, this is a loaded statement and it really depends on the context you're asking it in. You'll see by the end of the video why the context matters. A frequent question we get as coaches is, how can I improve my recovery from training? There's a problem with this question as we need to understand what people are really asking when they say it. What this question is really asking is, what novel techniques can I do to improve my recovery to the level of performance enhancing drugs? What people would really like to hear is something along the lines of active recovery, a supplement, cold water immersion or sauna, etc. The problem is right now, there's no good evidence that any of the more well-studied techniques do anything meaningful. And if there is some evidence, its repeatability and study design is so small and so poor that we can't really recommend it with any good confidence. Let's imagine a graph of your performance versus time. Performance is on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis. Imagine further a line running through the middle of our graph at zero. This line represents your 100% fully recovered in a state capable of hitting your current maxes or exceeding them. At some time in this graph, you do a training session. Your current state then drops below this line. Depending on the magnitude of the training relevant to your capabilities, you drop a certain distance below the zero line. This is the effect of fatigue from training dragging you down. As time progresses, you make your way back to the zero line in a reasonably linear fashion, assuming the following. No further training is carried out before you return to the zero line. If you train again, you push the progress back. Adequate calories, nutrition are consumed. Continued undereating of calories will lower the zero line performance. So undereating over a prolonged period of time will reduce the magnitude of the zero line performance i.e. 200 kilo squat to 190 kilos, etc. Prolonged and deep sleep are achieved before, after, and all the way up to the zero line. No random and catastrophic events happen to you psychologically or physiologically. Emotional stress or a car accident, for example, which uh, would be both. So if you fulfill all of the above, the pat back to zero is pretty linear and takes as long as it takes. If it's a small training session, it could be 24 hours. If it's a maximum all-time PB session, it could be 7 to 10 days before a fully recovery might be achieved. The types of fatigue matter to length of time. For example, hypertrophy style training or plyometrics, but the principle remains the same. So when people ask what I can do, assuming you're doing all of the previous, there's no novel technique that is surely going to speed up the time it takes for that line to get to zero. There's an important idea here that we need to look at when we go look for the signs i.e. interventional trials or randomized control trials, is that while we very often see conflicting results, we need to zoom out further and think about the implication of the studies and what that would mean. For example, if we look at a study, the efficiency of repeated cold water immersion on recovery after a simulated rugby union protocol, where rugby players underwent 2 by 5 minutes cold immersion post-matches and tested for creatine kinase, muscle soreness and counter-movement jump versus a control group. Long story short, this study suggested a positive effect on recovery. So cold water is good, right? Well, no. Maybe. In 2015, Robert said a regular application of cold water immersion after exercise reduces gains in muscle mass and strength training following three months of resistance training. So cold water bad, cold water reduces the inflammation post-training, but we need that training for adaptions, right? Question mark. Well, maybe no as well. Researchers in 2017 compared the effects of active recovery and cold water immersion. They proposed that the cold water immersion had no effect on this process versus active recovery at least. There's so many novel techniques available to us here and we could run ourselves in circles, but ultimately you'll find one of the following. It does nothing, it makes recovery worse, or in the short, short, short term, it might be a little bit of a help but in the long term could likely interfere with your ultimate gains. The good news for you is that you don't need these techniques. The best way to allow for more training is by slowly increasing your training capacity over the length of your career while fulfilling your basic needs that we outlined above. Even better news is that you're almost certainly aren't doing what you need to be doing for the above to recur. I bet you're not sleeping enough. I bet you're eating like an asshole. I bet you're training like a dumbass. Fix these things first and you'll see that you won't need to recover about any novel techniques as you'll be doing just fine without them.